Sweet School on RealArtCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. Hello, I'm Dale Left with your three agriculture. Today I'm with John Laurie at the uh, Agriculture and Agri-Food Research Station in Lethbridge, Alberta. How are you doing today, John? I'm doing fine, thanks. Great. Uh, you've been here only for about a year and a half, and uh, but your, your title is to Enabling Technologies. Do you want to talk just a little bit about what that means here? Okay, so yeah, I've, uh, like I said, been here a year and a half. Um, after finishing grad school, I moved to the U.S. and worked there for a number of years and also in the U.K. Uh -huh. And uh, so my background is mostly in genomics and, and uh, molecular biology. Okay. Um, so my position here is to actually use some of that, that knowledge and those skills to, uh, to essentially help out breeders in, in their process. So the enabling technologies is to develop tools for breeders and to apply some new genomics and uh, molecular biology techniques uh, in that process. So your role here is to make sure that uh, Agriculture Canada stays at the cutting edge of research and don't get kind of left behind in, in old patterns of thought, I guess. That would be a, one way of saying it. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. there's a, a lot of um, the, I think, advancements in genomics and, and molecular biology being done outside of Canada, especially, especially right. in the U.S. And, uh, and, and in Europe. And so I've you know, worked with some of those people and I, um, I know some of that that, that, technology. Uh, that technology, and so I'm bringing it back here to Canada, to Lethbridge. That's excellent. Well, um, so can you talk a little bit about some of the tools that you're uh, working on to help keep uh, Agriculture Canada and Canada at the forefront of this technology? Okay, so um, one of the things that we're helping with is uh, to speed up the breeding process. Uh -huh. And to do that, um, my lab does uh, doubled haploid production, so we do that through two means. One is through actually um, immature pollen, which is called uh, microspores. So we culture the microspores and are able to regenerate plants from the microspores. And uh, So if I, if I understand this, you're trying to get a, like a certain level of genetic purity. Is that kind of part of what it is? Why you're using like really young uh, microspores? Yeah, that's right. So, um, so basically life alternates between a haploid and a diploid. Okay. And so we're diploid, the plants are diploid, but the, the microspores are haploid. And when right. we put them in culture, they actually, most of them spontaneously double right. and become diploid. But because they're coming from a haploid, they make a complete perfect copy. So they're genetically uniform right from microspores. Right. Yeah. So without using the, this double haploid technology, breeders have to back cross, back cross, back cross, right, yeah. and it can take as many as 10 generations to get genetically pure material through crossing, whereas here from, from essentially from pollen, immature yeah. pollen, the microspores, it's done within a one to two generations. So it significantly speeds up the breeding process. And so what kind of things do you do with the pollen then to, to, make, to get it to the point where you, where you can use it? So the interesting thing about plant cells is uh, um, a lot of different cells within the plant are able to reprogram to form a new plant. So we know this through just making cuttings of plants that you can root it and get shoots. Right. Yeah. Um, so the plant cells have that, that ability to reform a plant. So the microspores have the same thing. Um, so instead of, if we capture them early enough, they decide not to go down the pathway to, to make a pollen grain, but to form an embryo and yeah. make a plant. Yeah. So this is a natural process uh, that plant cells, uh, ability that plant cells have. And we're just, uh, you know, taking advantage of that, that ability of the, the cells to form an embryo in a plant to, and, to speed up breeding. And so then where do you take it from there, though? It's into genomics and some other things, I guess, eh? Um, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we, we are working to improve that and, and uh, give that technology to the breeders. And then, of course, they use it to, to, to capture more genetics into their breeding program. Um, so for my lab, we also you know, work on genomics tools. So that's uh, uh, to help kind of mimic what goes on in nature right. in terms yeah. of reprogramming the, the gene expression to give us a, a certain uh, uh, trait for the, for the crop. 
So one of the interesting things is that, that uh, often as you, uh, as you go to work on some of these things, you find out that nature has already been there, although it seems like it's, it's science fiction. Once you start to do the work, that you actually are, the nature's already been there, and you kind of do some of the same work uh, you know, with a purpose in mind. Yes, yes, definitely. So it, what we're knowing now, we're kind of in the, the dawn of the genomics era, and when yeah. we're, we're, now that we've sequenced the genomes for you know, barley and wheat and corn and other species, um, and, and now many different diverse lines within those species, we're starting to see how nature has essentially kind of shuffled things around to reprogram the plant to, you know, to make it like this, a small kind of popcorn variety as opposed to a large, you know, 10 foot hybrid growing in a field. It's, um, of corn here. Yeah, yeah of, of, corn, of the corn, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this is, you know, this corn is the same height as the, as the wheat, wheat yeah. and barley. Yeah. Um, just and because that of in nature. Like that's it's, a corn. it's a completely natural line, yeah. 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 It's just uh, got some, some popcorn genetics in it, so it's yeah. got some, some small features. But, uh, yeah, we're learning uh, now that we look at genomes, um, how they are, are changing in nature. Yeah. And then, so uh, me as a, as a biologist then can take that knowledge and apply that to our our breeding programs to, to speed things up. Yeah. Okay, that's really good. I just want to thank uh, John Laurie, uh, research scientist at Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada in Lethbridge for being with us today. Thanks a lot, John. Yeah, thank you, it's yeah. been great.